Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am back with some reactor tutorial videos where I'm going to demonstrate how to build synthesizers in reactor 6 using the built-in modules. If this is something you're interested on, just subscribe to the channel. I will probably be posting these videos weekly and you're going to see all the details required to build one of these. In the background, you can see the um, replica I've built of the Beringer Neutron. Um, I've chosen this synth because it has a matrix and we can learn a lot by trying to replicate that in Reactor 6. If you guys want to try it, I will leave the link of the file and the description. It's just download and you can have a look at it. Um, so let's start by having a look at the block diagram so we can learn how to build the neutron in uh, Reactor 6. <laughs> So the first thing we want to look at is the normalized routing block diagram of the synthesizer. This will show you all the paths uh, of the synth uh, when the matrix is not in use. So this is what we need to follow in order to achieve um, the synthesizer without the matrix. So as we can see in the picture, we have two oscillators uh, with the summing oscillator mix, um, then a noise oscillator that gets summed into that mix as well, and an external input. The signal will travel then to a voltage control filter, which can be modulated by an LFO or by an envelope, which in this case is envelope number two. The signal then travels to the overdrive, to the VCA, and envelope one will be opening and closing this voltage controlled amplifier, which you can then control the um, amount of the voltage controlled amplifier using the VCA bias knob. Uh, further, we got the delay and then the output. So pretty simple. Here we have the attenuator flow, which starts by the unipolar LFO. Uh, the signal travels to the attenuator 2 and this is just a simple knob to raise the amount you want to send to modulate the pulse width on both oscillator 1 and 2 as well as attenuator 1. At the bottom left corner we've got the noise generator going into the sample and hold. However, uh, in this case we will have to have a look at the analog Behringer version because we don't know if the noise generator modulates the rate or the glides. We don't have the answers for that. So we need to have a look at the analog version in order to get our answers. Underneath, we have the envelope generator 2 going into an invert. What this means is that the envelope generator signal will be reversed. So envelope generators are basically uh, attack, decay, sustain and release, classic ADSR, uh, and, and then becomes RSDA. That's basically what is happening. Finally, we have the bipolar LFO, uh, which signal travels to the MULT input and then gets split into MULT1 and MULT2. So this is the neutron normalized routing. Um, it's quite simple, nothing major. We are going now to have a look at Reactor 6. Opening Reactor, you should get access to this menu where you can choose play to play with Reactor Instruments, patch for modular racks and build. We are going to choose build and first things first, remove the inputs. Get the outputs out of our way and then let's build not a new core cell, not a new macro, but a new instrument. Click on build new instrument, then ch we're going to change the name to Neutron Digital version 1.0. 
we are going to connect the outputs by drag and dropping them uh, onto our instruments and alt the command on the Mac keyboard. Then we're going to go into our instruments, sort out the outputs again, and we can also rename them if you want to, and then build two new macros, one for the synthesizer and one for the matrix. So this is basically to have a better workflow. We will separate both of them. A very important thing to know is um, how to debug the values of your inputs and outputs. If uh, all the values are correct, this can be done by using something called a numeric readout. And here I'm using it to check uh, the frequency values in Hertz from a pitch input. Press Command-E to unlock your panel and drag and drop your objects in the graphics user interface uh, according to your needs. Um, Command-E again to lock the panel and as you can see I start rotating the knob and it's giving me the values in frequency in the numeric readout. The pitch input only accepts 0 to 127 but that's not true. If you change that to negative values like minus 20, you will get even lower values, which can be useful for a low frequency oscillator. Here's another very important tool, the scope, and we're going to use this quite a lot. Um, this will allow us to see uh, the outputs of the waveforms and the parameters with more in depth. Um, I am building just a quick oscillator, a saw oscillator, um, which we are going to trigger just to have a look at the scope. Um, here, just create a gate MIDI input to trigger the amplitude of the waveform. And as you press any keys, like your QWERTY keys, you should be able to see a waveform in the scope. Decrease the scope milliseconds and you'll see the waveform in more detail for higher pitch notes. The final part of this video, I just want to show you the location of this Reactor 6 audio settings. Um, here I'm routing the outputs 1 and 2 for screen recording and 3 and 4 for the M audio M track, where uh, I've got my speakers plugged. And that's it, you just need to connect it to the instruments and it's all done. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, next video, we're going to start looking at the oscillators of the Behringer Neutron and replicate them into the digital uh, environment using Reactor 6. So, once again, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.